cracking, y'all. Welcome back to Planet Boo for another fantastic psychological thriller, story driven interactive game, The Park. It's your boy, Boo, and I'm ready to get back into some action. I don't know about you. Yes, y'all heard it. The Park. Let's get it popping supposed to be a uh, you know a fairly short game psychological thriller have some fun rather uh have some fun with it real quick and uh let's let's get into this narrative experience best played in a dark room wearing headphones as i always do um i do not play horror games during the daytime absolutely do not all lights have to be off and i like to immerse myself in the feeling fun calm what you got for us in my heart and mind I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Where's Mr. Bear? I haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. Stay in the car. Go and ask information. You know, I probably should have looked at the controls. If, you know what? There probably really isn't much of anything for controls, considering it's an interactive game. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it. All right, cool. Simple. These games are a lot of fun to play. They're just kind of just... Just move along and enjoy the show. It's almost like watching a movie. Or like an interactive movie almost. Atlantic Island Park. Drink and bingo. Attention patrons. The park is now closed. Please make your way to the car park at your earliest convenience. Employees prepare the park for shutdown. Before we leave, I want to interact with the kid real quick. See if he says anything. Nope, he got him a... Uh, what is that? I forgot the name of that. Actually, it looks just like a creature. I think that's a... That might be an Easter egg on his shirt. Very well might be. Alright, let's check this place out. Atlantic Island Park. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. That sun looks hella happy. Callum was born the day this place opened. This is his favorite place in the world. A tribute to the untamed heart of Solomon Island and the people who use their talents to bring the dream of Nathaniel Winter to life. May this park be a place where joy and laughter are gathered and used to infect all of those who follow after. Alright. Lorraine, don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son's teddy bear. Hey, stop! I think your boy just ran into the park. I'll unlock the gates for you. Badass little kids. <laughs> Badass little kids. Wait up there for mommy, Callum. Come on, this way. Shouting provides audible and visual clues. Callum, where are you going? This way, mommy. Callum, I told you to wait in the car. Over here. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Badass little kid. Nathaniel Winter. There he is. Why do I have a feeling that's not our, our son? Wait for mommy, Callum. There's this something way. special about the entrance to an amusement park. A line drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. On this side, the apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. It's no wonder Callum ran back inside. 
I wouldn't want to leave either. Attention employees, the park is now closed. Have a safe journey home. Wait for mommy, Callum. Come on, mommy. Yeah, see? See, they don't even wait till it gets all the way dark. The creepy stuff just kicks off. Really? 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 Just like that? <laughs> Callum, where are you going? All right, now the kid's not responding to me. It's got dark real quick. Park. What happened here? Come back, Callum. Press shift to toggle. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Wanted to get some running in. There he is. If this kid disappears. No, the game won't let me catch you. Don't go in there, kid. What if I stop? Is he going to stop or is he going to keep running? He's going to keep running. Guess we got to follow him. Well, pro I probably should have kept... Uh... Mommy needs to see you, Callum. Catch me, Mommy. Carrie Killian is Satan's whore. Okay. Good start. Let me uh see what's back over here first. I wanted to uh scope the area. Where are you? Over here. Alright, I'm gonna stop calling for this little runt. I bet you every bit of money that's not my actual kid. Alright, so we got the House of Horrors, um, Bumper Cars, Roller Coaster, Octotron, Ferris Wheel, and Tunnel of Tales. Yeah, I can tell you right now, I bet you the, I bet you the House of Horrors isn't the scariest thing. I bet, it's, I bet it's that tunnel. Those tunnels are scary. If it's the tunnels where you're just sitting on a ride, you know what I mean? And they got all these animatronics and, and robotics things and and uh, visual illusions and things like that. That stuff's scary. I'm not going in there without a flashlight. There you are, because I'm gonna make you. We're just gonna back our way in. Okay, they actually won't let me go any further than that. Okay, so we gotta find a flashlight. Well, let's keep following. Our uh, godforsaken kid who doesn't follow directions, even if that is our kid. All right, so far, I don't, I don't I'm not getting any heebie-jeebies. Oh, a shoe. I'm not getting heebie-jeebies. Is that our son's shoe? I think this belongs to Calum. Oh boy. He needs some tread on the bottom of those things. I can understand why he, why he would slip or his shoe would fall off. Chad the chipmunk, huh? Just a drunk guy in a suit. Welcomes you to Atlantic Park. Chad can be seen in daily ice sculpting shows in the following locations. All right, so Chad the chipmunk, worst in class. Chad can't even seem to pass. Chad gets angry, likes to fight. Chad is beaten every night. Chad will all have a dead-end job. Chad will die a useless slob. Damn, Chad. Why'd you have to go out like that, Chad? I wonder what this is. Purchase the land on Solomon's Island for a pittance, I might add. What is that? What is that that I'm listening to? Whatever old Archie Henderson did to the locals, just the mention of his name had people slamming doors and locking shutters. From the moment I arrived on the island, my lawyers had arranged everything in advance, but their uh, realtors still had to come and deliver the keys to me personally. He took it upon himself to offer me another warming. I... Oh, warning? Or, yeah, warning. I don't know what you're planning to do with this land, Mr. Winter. But the soil here is bitter with a curse carried from the old country. Old man Henderson, he did terrible dark things. The land remembers, sir. Oh, God. I dismissed him shortly afterwards, mostly amused by his pathetic attempts at warning me off. I have a great vision for this place and the will to see that the vision through to the very end. 
The name is perfect, and I cannot imagine it being anything else. This is the start of something amazing. Yep, okay. Okay. Believe that if you want to. Horrible things were done here, and the land has not forgotten. The land remembers. And now we are going to have to suffer. We are going to have to suffer for it. All right. That, oh, they're sending me. I told you. They're sending me to the tunnel already. Already they're, they're sending me to the tunnel. I told you. This is the thing I was I was most worried Helen, about. Stay where you are. I don't even see this kid. I got a flashlight. I told you. I was most worried about this, but it's actually in a boat. All right, doesn't look like I can... Ah, there we go. Here we go. Scoping the area, make sure I don't miss nothing happening around me. Checking my surroundings. Always mind your surroundings. Is what the great Ducard said. <laughs> oh, actually, that was actually Raz al Ghul. Excuse me. Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter, his wife, and his two children. A boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. They were very poor and had very little to bite or sup. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband. We will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow and abandon them there. No, my wife. I cannot do that, said the man. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Hansel and Gretel, I started paying less attention as I heard began to breathing. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut and gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. The next morning, the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food that day. What is this? Clever Hansel leaves a trail of white stones behind them as they pass into the woods. It's our boy Chad. When father leaves them, the children wait a while, then follow the trail back to their parents' house. You're not scary, Chad. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, the children are sent to bed without any supper. Mm. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. In the morning, their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. Hansel broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs and his trail was destroyed. I'm waiting for something to like grab me and turn me around, but it's not happening yet. Unable to find the trail home, the children wandered in the forest for three days. Is this the real story of Hansel and Gretel? Because I didn't think it was anything like this. Of course, I'm not sure if I actually... The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. I think Hansel, I'm... desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. I think I only ever actually read or had the story read to me probably once in my life. My house, 
an old woman emerged from the house, sniffing the air. Don't talk to witches. With cloudy eyes. Oh, you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back, for the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. Hmm. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. That's what I was waiting for. I can't see anything. That's what I was waiting for. into a cage and put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. Time passed, and poor Hansel refused to eat, fearing the day that the witch would eat him. The witch, for her part, grew impatient. Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. Well, there's the end. I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool! The old witch said, the opening is here. And she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel gave the witch a shove. And the old crone tumbled forward into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel Whoa. freed her brother Hansel. And together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged... The children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled, and the witch was cooked. And so then, really? Because even children can't survive on sweets, they divided up the body of the old witch and... Did that really happen? In the movie? So really, I just made it out of there with just like... Some light breathing on me, <laughs> and some like, all right. I, oh, okay. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Joker, Joker Goose. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Joker Goose. That's what I'm talking about. Joker Goose. Oh man. All right, Joker Goose. I see you. Right, we survived. That was weak, but entertaining nonetheless. I wonder if things get worse as we uh, progress through the park. So the thing I was most worried about seemed to be not anything at all. Cancel and Gretel. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children, the whole world against them, the forest, the birds, the old witch. Even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister. Hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry. Looking for our own house made of candy. Looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Mm. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places. Sure. The tree branches reach like claws. Sure. Sure, you're not wrong. Come out, sweetie. I'm done calling this kid until it's absolutely necessary. Another accident. This place. Bro, what? That scared the hell out of me because the controller fell off my bed. One of my controllers fell off my bed and hit me. 
right when I opened that van up and things started vibrating. Scared the hell out of me. What's going on? I'm not even moving right now. What? Is this thing glitching? Oh. Oh, you know what? No, because the controller. Hold up. Because the controller... <laughs> Because the controller fell down, I had it plugged in too, so... Okay, that that scared the hell out of me when that controller fell down. So what happened was, because my controller was plugged in, and I opened this, and the controller started vibrating, and it was next to me on the bed, but I didn't know the controller was plugged in. That's funny. I was like, what is going on? Why are things shaking? Actually shaking in real life? Crazy. Uh, despite the constant interruptions to work, Atlantic Island Park will be opening on time. The governor is booked to cut the ribbon, so the only real question is whether we will have any customers. I'm not truly worried. The customers will come out of simple curiosity. I deduce what was needed from the band writings of Archie Henderson. It's astonishing to think that a resonance on positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process. Henderson himself chose to use negative, and that caused some of the taint that still lingers in this place. I will not make his mistakes very soon. I will know if this has been all for nothing. All right, so that looks like, I was going to say blood. But why is, is that the teddy bear? Is that the teddy bear we've been looking for? Park maintenance. Let's see if we can get around to the other side and pull that teddy bear out. Uh, uh, but that teddy bear has been through. Uh, I'll just say it's had better times. It's seen better times. People throwing rocks at us. Back, Callum. Yeah. What'd you say? Stop, Callum. What does he say? Don't ditch me. Callum, tell mommy where you are. Sound like he said I swim. All right, let's go check out this ride. This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. To make me dizzy. The guy just snapped. Those poor kids. Eyewitness report Atlantic Island Park incident. Officer on duty. Uh, Sheriff Bannerman. Witness Miss Norma. We're waiting for our turn on the ride. Frank, me, and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making an ice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly. I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving and picking away at the ice. And at first, we thought he was making some animal like a tiger or a lion. But as more and more ice fell away, when you first looked, there was like a human face smiling out of a block of ice. But um, the more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the proportion. Something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat. Just a little bit faster, like you were prey, and that thing in the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up, and one of them made a face at the carving and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit. And then, well, he went berserk. For a few moments, it was chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy who had one of the teenagers on the ground, and he, oh, he was stabbing them with an ice pick, and blood was spraying. And people were screaming, and Frank and I had the kids, and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. The last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was that the eyeball of one of those poor kids had landed on the ice sculpture, making the horrible creature look more or less alive. Interesting. Alright, so some bad stuff happened around here. Chad out here stabbing people. Alright, this looks like it is... Obviously, another report. Frustrated by the fact that the plans seem incomplete, I know as well as anybody that the rules of the game can be changed with enough money. You know how that goes. But no matter how much money talks, it can't conjure up missing plans from the air. I've tried contacting an organization with some of these plans, and they are... 
stonewalling me. Every contact that I had, every meeting place that I had, watched and swept bare. I have a sinking feeling that I have been swindled. We've gone ahead with what we could find and the plans, regardless. The harvesting machines, the transport mechanisms, etc. I'll probably let Nicholas name them something cute for the day we open the park. They will be rise after all. Alright. Yeah, that's a scary looking bird thing. I mean, not scary, but it's it's definitely freaky looking. Alright, so same way. What we got? Look at our boy Chad. What up, Chatty boy? Got over here. Increase speed. Alright, I'm looking at the meter here, so. What happens if we go max, max speed? Alright, well, let's slow it all the way down. Maybe that's how we have to actually get on it. Let's crank this baby down. There we go. Let's 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 bring it to a complete stop. And uh see if we can get on this bad boy. Yep, complete stop. I want to see everything come to a halt. There we go. Now we should be able to get on. No. All right, well, um, hmm. Ah, oh, there we go. I, th that was interesting. All right, so what happens now? I'm guessing something's going to speed up the ride super fast. Kind of like how we did. Yeah, there we go. Why would you even get on this in a park by yourself? This woman is crazy. This woman is crazy. I like how the back of the car actually looks like a little face looking at you. Oh, snap. We got Scarecrow, man. Scarecrow, man. Okay, so, um... I would say that... I can already tell uh, this game isn't going to scare me at all or make me jump or I don't even think it's going to psychologically kind of mess with me in any type of way like uh, Into the Darkness did. Yeah, this, this, is, this isn't going to provide like there were, there were times with the uh, Into the Darkness game where it literally had the hairs standing on the uh, on my back. Oh, I remember this. Dang, shorty got a thigh gap though. <laughs> yeah, what are your random pictures doing out here though? Big question. Really big question. Is this the way? No. All right, so now this bridge has a treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled, red, falling thing and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations and the world that I had built for Callum is no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. They shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. Alright, I see another teddy bear back there. 
Oh, what a little demon thing back there. Something with a creepy wet red face. See that? I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of season here really drags. There aren't that many tourists around and... Um, sorry, I, I, I was getting ahead of myself. And so most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping, and most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve... Uh, see, even I am starting to call him Chad and went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve, the local lush as Chad, the chipmunk. Child, friendly mascot at Atlantic uh, Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all of that. But the more he wears the suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first, it was a little things like refusing to change out of the suit at work. This is starting to feel like, uh, I don't know if this movie is Stitches, but the one movie with the dude... And the clown suit that started actually becoming a clown. This is what it's starting to sound like. But then I saw him at Susie's Diner, still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained discreetly to the park management about the smell and saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The, stu the suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by. And apparently, Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him puking up in a gutter outside the side coal station because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. Those sh those shapes he, he makes in the ice, though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the tooth the booth today, lucky me, and he just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me, sizing me up, eye-fucking me, whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted, and he just stood there not saying anything. Eventually, I called my supervisor, and when he came by, Chad, Steve wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that ch chipmunk suit ever again. Didn't scare me. Nah, this, nah. I am enjoying myself, but I'm not getting, I'm not jumping or anything. The best thing they could have did was me putting my controller... Me putting my controller up and uh, not knowing it was plugged in and vibrating and giving some cool 4D effects. <laughs> That's the best thing that could have happened. All right, so here are the bumper cars ride. Constant crashes and 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. I guess I kind of want to make myself to make way to... Hello. Expensive device. Shocking revelation. I wonder what all that was about, but I guess we should go to where that light is. That would make the most sense. Now, wouldn't it? You see a bright light? Go to it. Don't be like Gizmo. Bright light! Bright light! Bright light! Gizmo does not like bright lights. Alright, let's see. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe you weren't supposed to go to the uh, the headlights. All right. Oh, examine accident report. Another one. Golly, I'm about tired of reading. <laughs> Employee's name, Francis. Um, blah, 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 blah. Supervisor, Richard. Witness, Lawrence Creed. Michael Edgeworth. During the transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the straps attaching the load to the truck came untied causing a cascade of bumper cars onto Francis, who was standing directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Francis was killed. Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have seen someone on the back of the load undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested that Dexter provide them with a urine sample. Double checking of the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screening for all drivers. Photocopy. The local laborers are very superstitious, and this hasn't helped. Some of them are refusing to return to work until we have someone from the local church walk the park and exorc 
exercise it. The bad spirits. They want to do an exorcism on the park. Alright, so I guess that means we go this way. Let's go up these stairs to see what lies ahead. It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. It's a beautiful when view. To me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she just gets some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead my mouth said, Yes, Sheriff. Continually delayed by the incompetence of the builders, the problems that they are locals. And so they believe a lot of rumors of what old man Henderson used to do here. They grew up on those tales. Every time a boat comes loose or a wrench goes missing, those fools are crossing themselves against the black magic. Of course, that is why I chose the site. Over all other potential, Solomon's Islands, a nexus for dark energies, and the thought of all that power just dissipating beneath the earth here. It makes my skin crawl. I called in a few favors back in Brooklyn and got someone at the local academy to see if they had any interesting books about local history. Turns out they do, and it turns out that Old Man Henderson has some pretty strong connections to the Brooklyn crowd. But that's something he wrote will help me find the piece of the plans that I am missing. Okay. So, uh, he was kind of in for all this, is what it sounds like. Alright, let's go, uh, hop on the Ferris wheel. Let's go hop on the Ferris wheel. Alright, let's go ahead and bring this... All the way down so we can get on there we go slow your road slow your road slow your roads there you go come to a complete stop we'll get on this one there you go are you gonna come to a complete stop or no I don't know if you are there. Wait, uh, wait, no, 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 no. Oh, yep, there you go. All right, well, let me try this one. Oh, wait, what? Right, Ferris. Well, okay, we got to actually go talk to Chad. Talk to Chad and he gets us on. Let me guess, it's going to speed up really fast. So I bet you something's going to pop up in the seat across from us. Some type of spirit or entity or something. Maybe even Chad. People come into your life for a reason. Dad used to say that before Mom ran off. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Calum was made that night or one of the ones that followed. I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. 
Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Mm. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Sometimes That's sad. people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. That's sad. Imagine about to start your fairy tale life with the man of, of your dreams and you're three months pregnant and then it just just crumbles, right? Right? There we go. There there's a little Grim Reaper dude. Well he was taking it easy on us this time. I guess that's supposed to be uh I was about to call him Old Man Winter. Is it Old Man Winter? Is, is it winter? I think it is winter. All right, good story, good story. Um, where do we go from here? I guess we just continue down this path. Continue down this path. What do we got? Oh, we going off roading? I think we're going off roading. Or well, maybe not. If she if she doesn't duck underneath this. Which I don't think she is going to. So looks like this is a dead end. There's no there's no duck button. I can't interact with anything to duck underneath this log. So that oh what do we got here? And uh, taken care of now. Thank you. I don't even know what I just picked up. But that's all been taken care of. I tell you, thank you, thank you, paranormal activity. Thank you. Thank you, paranormal. A lot of people idolize their children. You hear them talking about their kids and just the way they talk? Their fucking voices make me want to vomit. <laughs> My angel likes That's... to read, and little Johnny is so good on the piano. Fuck those people! <laughs> you give up nine months of your life carrying them, you traumatize yourself giving birth to them, and then you spend the rest of your life as their slave. Wiping asses, mopping a piss, feeding them, little life-sucking monsters who take and take and take until... <sighs> we all go insane. Oh. Any parent who pretends otherwise is just dishonest. That's called choice supportive bias. I am honest. Callum really grinds my gears, and he owes me everything. Mm. Everything. Mm. It's fuck right if I just abandon him. Mm. This is starting to turn into Shazam. Straight up abandon your kid at the park. Abandon your kid at the park Shazam style. What is this one called? Uh, where are we at now? Does it say you are here? Oh, roller coaster. Uh, uh oh, this ain't gonna be looking good for a little call. Call him. Never got around to do it before. Whatever his name is. Call him, call him. Ain't gonna be looking good. She she putting that logic into it. She's like, you know what, kids? They're leeches. <laughs> uh, too funny. Too funny. Ride the roller coaster. Let's go. Chad wasn't here this time. So we just hopped on without him. Without his permission. What do you want? We need to talk about Callum. Callum. What do you mean? What have you done to him? I? That's insulting. You and your boy are everything that this place doesn't want. The antithesis of what we stand for. Where is Callum? Poor child. He tried so hard to do what he was taught. He even left you a trail of breadcrumbs. But the park is just so hungry. Tell me where my son is. Which has him now? Has both of you? No happy ending here, I'm afraid. Just... just leave me alone. Fool. You always were. Mm. Oh, 
Ooh, I like that. That's dope. Emergency room, right? Giving birth in the hospital? Is that what that's supposed to be? Hospital doors. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I couldn't even read what that said. It was going by so fast. I'll have to rewatch this part in the edits. Slow it all down. Freeze frame it. Yeah, that's definitely the hospital. <laughs> yo, Lil Callum got smashed, yo. <laughs> Lil Callum got smashed. <laughs> yo. Little Callum got handled. <laughs> Little Callum got handled. We handled that real quick. Zero to 100 real quick. Alright, looks like something else to read over here, huh? Oh no, this is the flashlight we needed. Alright, so this is uh, this this is look like it's coming around to the uh, final chapter, into the big horror house with the open mouth. Alright, so how do I activate? It? Oh, you know what? It'll probably um pop up automatically once we get back over there. So let's head back and um, handle this witch and find Callum, even though it's sounding like we're starting to realize that our kid ain't shit. Which I bruises on his arms, finger marks. Someone has been hurting him. I've asked him, demanded really, to know where he got the marks. But he doesn't want to answer me. Something has scared him into silence. Doesn't dare talk. He's been changing too. Something sinister lurks in the darkness behind his eyes. I catch him staring at me at odd moments. In the night, he tosses and turns and cries out words that I cannot understand. When I try to soothe him, he snaps and bites at my fingers. I think he wants to talk to me. I think he wants to tell me. But they are watching him every minute of every day. They are whispering to him in his sleep, changing him. They are taking my baby away from me. I can save him. And there will be pain. But I love him, and in the end, he will understand why. Ah. Uh. I was about to say, I was about to say, why are they giving me alternatives? Like, this is a very linear game, but those stairs are broken. I can't go up anyway. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, I think she's, uh, I feel like she's going to give up on this boy, Callum. Like, like, if that, in fact, was the kid that ran back and was it like, something else, trying to get her to come into the park by herself, that kid is straight booty. It's a badass kid. All right. The whole town was shocked by that one. Never found out who did it. Cotton candy corpse leaves sour taste in the park goers' mouths. Yesterday evening, visitors to Atlantic Island Park were shocked and horrified by the discovery of a dismembered corpse behind the cotton candy stand. According to the local authorities, the corpse has yet to be identified. However, they have confirmed that it remains to be those of a child. The corpse was discovered by a group of teenagers from Innsmouth Academy who noticed a pair of ravens tucking at something just out of sight behind the shack. Nathaniel Winter, the owner of Atlantic Island Park, has released the following statement. It is true tragedy when some something like this occurs, especially in a place that was designed to bring forth happiness and joy. The staff of Atlantic Island Park offers their condolences to the family and friends of the victim and will cooperate fully with the authorities' help to bring this case to rest. All right. Whack a jack. Clowns. Clowns are clowns are creepy. Clowns are creepy. Alright, we just did a 360, but the gates closed now, so sounds like we have to go into I wonder if that's where we want to bear. Maybe we gotta go here, cause this is, oh yeah, cotton candy, here we go. Oh! Is that Callum? Look at that clown. Poor oh, bastard. Who did this to him? Oh no, that's a grown ass man. 
This dude got smoke. Watch the clown face be gone. Nope, it's still there. Oh, what's up, man? Still didn't scare me. I was just like, oh, what are you doing there? <laughs> what's up, man? I don't know if they want me to turn around or what, but. Okay, so where to now? Can I leave yet? No. Alright, so I'm assuming someplace else is about to be lit up, giving us a direction. Ah, here we are. The, these are mine. Some kids laugh and some kids cry, but mostly children simply die. Say no to graffiti. Your mother not safe. The league. I can't even read this. What does it say? Reality something reality. Fuck gravity. Fear the boogeyman. Stop picking your nose then. <laughs> Don't believe anything they fit they tell you. Are you better off than you were a couple years ago? Nineteen eighties. Ooh, this is like this is trippy actually. All right, there's that. Yo, these pills are real. All right, let's go confront the little demon dude over here. What do you gotta say? I wanna get a good look at you, man. Let's go check on old boy back here. Alright, so everything... I'm not going to say everything's the same. Obviously, there's things floating around. Don't touch me! Don't leave me here, Cal. Future Times. Belly Button is the signature of your personal creator. I believe her name was Mama. Every 17th child is a magnet for sinfulness. Made um, omniscient by broken fires in the cult. In the, what does it say? Coastal strain? We don't believe that the earth belongs to battered goats. And shamrock after birth. Only truly naked uh, rends of righteous uh, indignation are severed by war cross cleavages and trust. What does that say? I don't know what that word is. Something arrhythmia. I can't tell if this font is horrible. Like, you can't tell the E's from the A's. Beaumont will come to the island bearing the talisman and uh, he will shatter the seals that bind the uh, orthody of corruption. Only then will priests shoot sluts, reveal housewives, pontificate and uh, delayed messiahs make... What is that word? A hells for the rescue of Tango and Cash. You know what? I'm not reading all this. That font is horrible. It's killing me. Pickle punks. All right, gates open. Ooh, self-harm is not good. Hello. 
Self-harm is not good, girl. I bet you were right where the big mouth is, huh? Oh, maybe not. The park is a collage of contradictions all of its own. Millions of people die every year in car crashes. And the park has little cars designed specifically to simulate that action. Here the children scream with joy. In the sideshow alley, you can walk away with 15 cents worth of mass-produced Chinese teddy bears while a grinning carny pockets your hard-earned five dollars. And what secrets lie beneath the sullen waters of the lake? The tears of jilted lovers, the soiled condoms of illicit affairs, the clotted blood of the lonely suicide. And the face of the witch looms over it all. I've always despised her toothy grin and warty nose. I hate that sparkle in her weathered, watchful eyes. I think Callum is waiting for me. Inside. Hey, activate that light. You need to activate that light. All right, here we go. This is this is more my style. Dark rooms with a flashlight. What have you done with him? Please, make me see. This is more my style. Atlantic Island Park has closed its gates. A jeering throng of town folk gathered as we hung the heavy iron padlock on the gates. Small-minded fools, scared of what they don't understand. My machines lie silent and dejected, but I'm not beaten. I've sent my wife and son back to Boston. I have retreated here to the House of Horrors, I must think. You ain't got nothing for me this time, Chad? What's up, man? That's you. That's you. That's you, Mr. Winter. The demon that haunts this place. Good old man. Good old Winter. Girl, look at your thigh gap, girl. Mm-mm-mm, girl. <laughs> Gonna have to do better than that. Alright, I saw this creature earlier when that when that flash popped up after we read that um that paper little werewolf dude There you go, Chad. Girls, you really... What's that supposed to be, like a Nazi? Alright, there's uh, Old Man Winter. Doing his Old Man Winter thing. So it looks like we have an option. We can go into the... Never mind. That's not an option. <laughs> We're going to go this way. I thought that was going to be like a house of mirrors type of thing. Alright, so we got down here and then we got over here. We'll go over here. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so well, before I do that, I'm now going to say, was this way a dead end or is this just uh, options that we have? No, this looks like a dead end, but there's probably something we gotta read or interact with, huh? Maybe not. Maybe I thought they're gonna make you sit in that chair and it activates some type of crazy sequence. Nothing to read. All right, we will bust the left and keep it moving. Got him. Got him. Hmm. More chairs. 
It's like a dead end. There we go. Incidents, and I cannot dismiss them as random chance. The park workers, the park works, but something is interfering with its intended function. It's as though the very air in this place is corrupting the power, even as I collect it. A very uh, few casualties here and there are acceptable, but when employees go on stabbing rampages, it draws attention. I'd rather not have the boys in blue, either kind, investigating this place too closely. It's a shame about Steve. I rather liked him. The boys in blue. I lost track of where I was. Am I going the right way? Uh, yeah, I haven't seen this yet. Got him. Got him. Thank you. So kind of you to open the door. Old man winter, we're coming in, bro. Oh, basements. Basements are creepy. Oh, y'all made me think I can actually open this door. I reckon only one of these doors probably open. Oh, this must be Old Man Winter's office. Nightmare Circus. Sir, I wonder if this is a real book. A circus. I actually kind of want to read the back of it. A circus burns the ground on opening night, killing dozens. The owner is put to death by an enraged mob of townsfolk just as he shouts out a curse now raven. Or now raven, a dark souled wanderer, comes to the ruins at dusk in search of his missing mother. Let the show begin. Hey, I wonder if. I wonder if that's kind of telling the story. Interesting. After they let me out, they gave me Callum back and sent me home with a handful of breadcrumbs. Home bit a sweet home. I barely recognized it. Where there had been color and light, there were shadows and regrets. Where there had been warmth, there was a bone deep coldness that never went away. I tried my hardest to keep the ghosts at bay. Dawn, watching from the dusty corners while I tried to teach his son to read. My father, coldly assessing me and finding me lacking. I devoted myself to Callum, did the things that they told me. It will get better, they said. Every day will be a little better than the last. I'm in the woods now, lost and afraid. Things never got any better. They really wouldn't let me exit out of that damn note while she was talking a shocking true story of hunger look at little gingerbread men on april 6 1846 a group of covered wagons began the 2500 mile journey to california just eight months just eight months later they found themselves stranded in the sierra nevada mountains with very little to bite or sup it was to become one of the greatest tragedies of the westward migration that the world has ever seen now our panel of donor experts have uncovered compelling evidence that the families were forced to resort to cannibalism in order to survive that terrible winter in this never before seen uh exposed in this never before seen exposed read about how the donor children were forced to eat their brothers and sisters in order to survive huh wilting is that earth like melting a solar flare has struck the earth millions of people are uprooted from their homes a young meteorologist searches desperately for a way to stop the global overheating and an exotic dancer named chance o'hara is the key to saving the world again dynamic exciting bombastic everything we've come to expect from uh this author's <laughs> novel 
Okay, what well, would the back other back say? Chance O'Hara's back, and you'd better believe that she's bigger, better, and bolder than ever. Ooh, they actually let me pick this up. Let me examine a couple more things. Rubik's cube. Let me make sure there's nothing crazy going on with this. Nope, just Rubik's cube. Okay. I love you from Callum. Uh oh. Uh oh. Things are getting real. Callum sending us notes, personalized notes. Milk, cheese, bread, butter, corn, potatoes, apples, fish sticks. Remember, drop off Callum electricity bill. Fix faucet. Remember to drop off your son. Examine wrench. Do we get the pocket this? No. Might come back for it later. We'll see. What's in our refrigerator? Oh, that looks gross. You don't cover your chicken? Bet you this is locked. Of course. Lorraine, I received your letter and I'm quite surprised. You ran off with your father. All of those years ago, then disappeared off the edge of the map, and when I finally tracked you down, refused to answer any of my letters, and now you write to me asking for help. I have another family now and another life. Your father was a horrible man, and I regret the years that I wasted with him. I loved you. I truly did, but every year you grew more and more like him. You were his girl, never really mine. Still, I would have fought for custody if you hadn't run away with him. It broke my heart, but I needed to go on living. I can't let you back into my life without picking up picking up old wounds. Hmm. Picking open old wounds. I'm sorry, Lorraine, but I just can't do it. Maybe one day it will be easier and I can meet Callum, but not yet. I'm not ready to forgive you. Please don't contact. Her name would be Karen. <laughs> Her name would be Karen. We consider your full recovery from your illness. This letter is official notification that you are considered sound of mind and body and may return to work. Please note that you should discontinue any medication that you have been using and dispose of any remaining medicines. If you feel at any time that you are suffering a relapse, then please make contact with your local physician immediately. So we just took those pills. We weren't supposed to be taking them. Courtesy of uh, Old Man Winter. What kind of toy is that? I think I've ever seen that before. Bro, if I have to read one more thing. Lorraine seems to be suffering from depression that began early in her pregnancy. Our discussions have made it obvious that these episodes stem from grief of losing her partner, Don, who died about six months ago. There are also several unresolved issues with her father. After being kept under careful observation, we provided standard treatment for this disorder, including electroconvulsion therapy. The patient responded and made a rapid recovery. Aftercare recommendations, discharge instructions. Lorraine has a newborn son, was placed in foster care shortly after birth when Lorraine displays symptoms of disorientation and depression. It is our judgment that Lorraine is fit to have her son return to her as long as he follows her recommended aftercare routine and continues with her medication. We have faith that she will be an effective caregiver. Lorraine has her own housing and her employer. Susie has said that she's welcome to return to her shifts at the diner. A woman, uh, Norma Creed, has offered to look over Callum while Lorraine works. It's with this support in mind that we feel confident uh, releasing Lorraine from the institution. She has been advised 50 milligrams a dose. Increase medication as needed according to the doctor. Our inquiry into the state of Mr. Donald Williams has been completed. We regret to inform you that the primary beneficiaries of his estate uh, were listed as Rose Williams and Richard Williams of New York State, the deceased parents. Our agency made contact with Mr. and Mrs. Williams and explained your situation, especially as regards to the birth of Donald's son, Callum. Unfortunately, they were not receptive to our overtures and they specified that without any legal proof of biological relationship, they consider you 
ineligible to receive any of the monies from Donald's estate. Huh. No longer contact them. I'm not being too forward when I enclose the bill for our services with this letter, attorney. Interesting. Those parents were like, yeah, we don't know nothing about this. Oh man, we're going even we're going even deeper. I'm not even gonna try to open any of these other doors. I'm going going straight for this door. Wait a second, are we going in? Oh, they want me to keep taking pills. I was about to say this is the same exact thing. Alright, you know what? 100 milligram tablet. Uh, 100 milligram tablet. They only want us to take 50. Oh, they're not going to let us take any more? That was it. Can't take any more. We can't pop this lid off. Come on. OD. OD. Lorraine, things aren't right between us at the moment. I know. I want to try and explain it. I think it is because I'm so far from home and I am working so hard every day working at the park. It gets worse like a spring inside my mind, grinding tighter and tighter and tighter. When we go for drinks after work, it gets a little better. The guys relax and we laugh, and we're we're good people again. I don't want to come home to you without being in my uh being in my right mind. But when this job is done, we need to get out of this place. We need to get back to the city where I don't feel like this anymore. I love you, Donald. P.S. I was thinking about a name for our boys and girls. Callum for a boy and Emma if it's a girl. They keep teasing me with all these pills everywhere. Hey, Callum, there you are, boy. Shit, the hell with that. Organized babysitter for Callum. Follow up with Dr. Spencer. Take the pills. Remember, take the pills. Emphasizing to take those damn pills. Let's see if this door opens up now. Nope. I've been bamboozled. So in that letter, it's basically the letter about the mom bitching. But uh, we went and said that dad took us. We didn't run away. Thank you, William, for the new um, watch. It is very nice. It has made me happier. Bro, if we go right back down to the same house, I'm going to lose it. Alright, it gets a little bit darker each time. Check out the pictures now. Check out the pictures now on the wall. A little bit darker each time. And they got that creepy old music playing. Is that the hat? Hat's all bloody. Pictures all crazy looking. The head is ripped off the doll, baby. Remember, more pills. <laughs> and tickets to Atlantic Island Park. So this is leading up to uh, where the game started. And what happens when we open the fridge now? Bottles. Bottles for days. Is that open? No. Alright, so the next time we do this, I expect the place to just be completely covered in blood. Like, completely. Alright, we got doll babies hanging now. I like that, I like that, it's a good feel. Babies hanging, blood. I 
if the... Ah. Uh. Look at the baby drinking. Baby drinking. Oh, these actually have... Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. See her cry. See her try. She lies. Say bye-bye. She lies. Dang, straight up got the baby in the oven. Cooking. Baby in the oven cooking. Watch this door close. Oh, actually, that door opened. That's where Callum went, right? Alright, Callum. Can't see a damn thing. Ah, oh, you've decided to let me back out. How kind of you. Bro, if I, go, if I go down one layer, baby taking the pills, baby head right there, more babies drinking. This baby smoking. This baby head is smoking. Letters getting more torn up. Please don't make me go down and experience this room again. I will shoot myself. If you make me run through this one more time. Oh my god. I get the point. I get the point. Oh, snap. Okay. Um Oh, dang. Blood is dripping off the walls. Everywhere? Okay. Okay. Dang, baby really cooking. This, 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 this is, this is too much. This is too much. Oh, a different, something different. By Stories golly. Are told again and again, and from their shape we build our understanding of the world. Two children are led into the woods. They are lost for a time, but then are captured by an old witch. The child goes missing in Atlantic Island Park. He wanders lost for a time before finding his way into the mouth of an old witch. In the oldest version of the story, the mother and the witch were the same person. I never wanted to be the witch, but I am, aren't I? Hmm, kids broke in a day. Has it been so long since I heard laughter? So very long. I took one of them. I couldn't help myself. It was fast, the others didn't notice. I liked hearing him laugh, the boy from the academy. I put him on a slab. I tickled him until he couldn't breathe. My machines came to life, whirring in time to his gasps and shrieks. I think this is delightful. The change wrought me in my the change wrought in me by the machines is not yet complete. There must be other children. I can lay on my slab. Huh. Okay. Eyes without sparkle. And that's literally it. 
eyes without sparkle. Hansel and Gretel comes full circle, don't it? Full circle, doesn't it? Count. Count. I was about to call it. I was about to say she about to fall. Little Callum about to get operated on. Little Callum about to get operated on. Zack Snyder slow motion. Look at Chad in the background. No, it's definitely him. Oh, oh man, winter. <laughs> oh man, winter. Oh man, winter. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh. Damn. Old Man Winter didn't make you push it down. He kind of put you in position to make your own decision. And you took your son's life. Well, I guess you don't have to worry about that little kid being a leech. You have basically turned into the witch. Hey, Lorraine. Lorraine. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son. In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. There it is, the park. A uh, short game, like we expected, like I like I knew it was. Um, interesting story, interesting story. Uh, kind of, kind of just, you know, really didn't do it for me as far as being a a psychological horror. It didn't really mess with me. It really didn't evoke any type of emotion out of me. I was kind of just ready to. Uh, get through the game to be to be honest with you about halfway probably earlier than halfway through i think i was about done with it um uh, but still the story i was interested to see where the story went but when they had me go through those rooms about five times over again with it slowly getting a little bit more um horrific if you will i was like oh my god could could you please make this end this is this is brutal this is unbearable but um not a bad game but just for me it didn't it didn't creep me out it didn't no jump scares or anything like that but for me i think the story was far more intriguing than the impact and the effect the emotional response the game that a game like this looks to evoke some type of emotional response from the player i i didn't i didn't give it that i know other people did from reviews i read but it really didn't hit me but you know a good short play enjoyed it enjoyed it uh looking forward to uh more games like this because i do enjoy narrative interactive games they're very relaxing they're very chill so most definitely so check me out i appreciate you guys thank you for watching as always if you're enjoying the content having a great time here on planet boo feel free to hit that like button drop a comment subscribe hit the join button become a member spread the word share and uh tell your friends and family come through we having a good time out here you feel me all right 
appreciate you guys. I am out.